first party day one games on Game Pass is going to be officially over after Starfield and Motocross. Nintendo, you basically won E3. And oh my God, this whole Activision Microsoft thing is giving me a bloody headache and I want it to end right now. What's going on everyone? Town here, 59 Direct, joined by the awesome little Bobby right now. And today we got your news that was talked about this entire week and a little bit into the previous week as well. But I do daily news videos. We can just talk about everything right here. So if you enjoy these type of videos, make sure you leave a like, comment down below as always, and sub to the channel if you happen to be new. If you just like the video, then leave a comment down below how we can improve the videos going forward. Bobby, let's get straight into this. Right now, game, I didn't even know this until you told me, Game Pass is basically not gonna have first party. We're, we're talking about first party games here. They are not gonna have first party games be actual day one because they are now going to be charging you money to get early access. And do not kid yourself. We have seen this for at least the last 10 years where you pay some extra money for whatever version of the game and you get early access to it. And everybody knows that the difference between that early access version and the day one version are basically the same. No day one patch ever fixes a majority of the problems. Look at Diablo, look at Battlefield 2042, look at Anthem for freaking crying out loud. Let's look at a bunch of games in the past that have had these deluxe editions or super deluxe editions. I mean, look at the screenshot right now up on screen right now. And tell me you have not seen this before. Oh, wait, oh, wait, oh, wait. You've totally seen it. And we already know what Microsoft is. It's a great business choice. And they know that they've been losing money on Game Pass because they're basically topped out in terms of people who are going to sub to the program and everything. So give us some more information, Bobby. And you're the one who actually broke this news to me. Yeah, um, I talked about this in the Starfield video a little bit uh, and in the the raising prices of Game Pass video, which, uh, you know, they just said two days before they announced price increases that they weren't going to raise the price because of Activision Blizzard. They were just going to do it before, I guess. But Game Pass uh, is not profitable, no matter what they say, or if they are making profits, they are razor thin. We're talking probably a couple thousand dollars a quarter from Game Pass because Game Pass costs a lot of money. Don't kid yourself. Like the day one deals and stuff, that costs them tons of money. When they do something for like Lies of P, that's a single player game. Sure, it looks great and it like adds value to their service, but there's not microtransactions. So they're not able to capitalize on making extra money from that. So they're just losing sales, right? They're hoping that some people will convert from renting to sales. But now with Starfield and with Forza, their first party games, they're doing something that's pretty ingenious and evil. Uh, which is the Microsoft way. And they are charging for premium editions that grant you five day early access. And what that means is that, in the, at least in the case of Starfield, I don't know if the Forza uh, prices have been put out yet, but in Starfield, you're gonna have to pay like 30 or $35 for five days of early access, which means even if you have Game Pass, if you wanna play in that early access period of five days, you know, when everyone's gonna be playing, like if you, if you watch content creators, they're all gonna be playing. So you're gonna to wanna to play because you don't want the whole game spoiled for you. You wanna experience it too. You're gonna to cough up that 35 bucks, right? right? And that's not day one. That's not day and date anymore, at least in my opinion, right? The whole thing it's is not. that you get Game Pass, you get day one access to all the games. That was the whole promise of the of Game Pass. That was the whole value proposition of Game Pass. And now they're like, well, yeah, you do, but you get early access if you pay us 35 bucks, right? Where it's half of a price of a game, right? And if you want Starfield and you want Forza and you want early access to both of them, not only now are you paying Microsoft the, what is it, 16 bucks a month now for Ultimate or, or 11 for regular? Yep. Uh, or no, 17. Yeah, yeah 17. Those price increases. It's and that's right before Starfield releases and actually uh, Forza Moza 8 right? Or Motorsport yeah. 8. That's also going to be having this. Now, we don't know the price for it, like you stated beforehand. But again, don't kid yourself, guys. And I know I, I know in this channel, people are just going to call us Sony ponies and everything like that. We bag on any bad decision that is done by any of these companies. They are companies. They don't give two craps about us. They really don't. One of, one of my top videos is, is shitting on Sony PlayStation Premium. <laughs> yes exactly you want you want to check out one of our highest viewed videos on this channel go check it out we are literally shitting on sony the entire time yeah so don't kid yourself okay early access is the same game that you are going to be getting day one there is absolutely no difference no day one no day one patch in the history of day one patches has fixed everything and being like oh it's an older version of the game so guess what we're gonna fix everything by day one God, if i if i had a 
dollar for every time I heard that, I could retire right now and live a luxury life on a beach over in Fiji somewhere, probably. Don't kid yourself. This Again, this is a good business move by them because, again, they need to make money, especially off something as big as Starfield. But now we're already seeing that they're going to be doing a Forza. So what's the next thing they're going to be doing? Probably with Fable, Oblivion, anything like that, right? They are going to be doing yep. this all of their first party games. Don't even kid yourself. The only time I could potentially see them not doing it is if they, well, shadow drop a game. But that's the whole point of a shadow drop. It literally is dropping right there. So yep. there's no point. So don't kid yourself. This is going to be the new norm going forward. And again, like we said beforehand, they're a business. We get it. They're going to do this. It's a crap. It's crap for us. But guess what? That's going to happen. And they know it's going to work. They know it's going to work. It's going to work with Starfield 100%. If people give them money for Forza 2, then it, it will guarantee happen in every first party Xbox game that's coming to Game Pass after. You will see a $30 to $35 premium edition that gives you five days early access. It's going to do go to every single first party game if, the, if both the games work. If Starfield works, they're going to be like, hey, we knew it would work with Starfield. Awesome. They're trying it with Forza. If you don't want this to become the practice for Game Pass, don't do either. Yep. Like, I know a lot of people, like, I'm excited for Starfield. Like, I currently have the Constellation edition of Starfield pre-ordered, right? And I won't even get early access because it's a physical thing that has to come to me, right? right? So, but I was like, it looks it looks like a good game. It's like a Bethesda game. It's a space game. I'm down with that, right? But I don't agree with this at all. Like, it just, like, everyone talks about how Xbox is so pro-consumer. This is just them trying to make it seem like, oh, hey, we're giving everybody the, the even thing. Oh, but if you really want to have the best experience, you got to pay us even more than you're already paying every month, which I don't, I don't agree. Like, Netflix doesn't go, hey, you want to watch this movie five days earlier? Pay us 30 bucks. That's, it's ridiculous. Yeah. So, and again, the whole promise of this whole day, the whole, the whole thing that people could say that, xbox has over sony and nintendo is that you get the day one on game pass through their subscription service not anymore you really don't right don't kid yourself everyone because when with the whole early access thing the whole day one just goes out the door because now it's going to be like because in, in the back of your mind you know in the back of your mind you're going to be like oh, the game's out the game's out i got four more days i got four more days it's gone no mm -mm. it's out already again no day one pass in the history of day one passes ever fixes everything that's serious heck yep. i even think cyberpunk i don't think cyberpunk did a early access but they had this big grand like oh we got a day one patch and everything like that the game was shit for over a year until it finally got some stuff fixed it's great now but until then guess what so do not kid yourself that a day one pass is going to fix this it's just not so you know what talon let's talk about happy stuff we got to talk about some happy stuff so let's move away from the crap and let's move <laughs> towards the awesomeness right now because nintendo you won e3 i know e3 is dead and it even was literally just confirmed that it's not going to happen in 2024 or 2025 but nintendo literally just came out and was like oh yeah hey by the way we got this like random direct like they always do tomorrow right at the time when they posted the tweet and everything and we're like okay so we get to see some pikmin 4 we'll probably see a couple other updates and it's like 40 minutes so we're like, okay so it's gonna be a decent amount maybe 20 minutes for pikmin and 20 minutes for other stuff right yeah. they dropped bomb after bomb dude i was like what is going on nintendo you start with pokemon which we're not going to show any b-roll because they hate us then yes. they start showing off some you know they had a few farm simulators which nintendo seriously what about the farm simulators i even tweeted about this but then they start <laughs> going into super mario rpg a new mario game that's coming but it's featuring peach which i'm assuming is trying to get traction off of the movie and everything like that we don't know anything yep. about it we saw like five seconds of some CG probably, or I guess well, um, cutscene or something like that, probably. Yeah, and it's been a very long time since a uh, Peach game. I think the last one was on like the early 3DS, if I'm not I mistaken. I think so, so, yes. Yeah, so we have that. Then we got a remake of the Luigi, Luigi Mansion game from the 3DS, and then we got a brand new 2D Mario game. So Super Mario uh, Wonder, I believe it's called. Then we got to see Pikmin 4. We also got confirmation that it's already released today, Pikmin 1 and 2, which is awesome. And it's just like, Nintendo, you literally came in and was like, hold my beer, boom, mic drop, won it right there. Bobby, I already know what you're excited about, but talk about it, go. <laughs> Nintendo absolutely like just murdered like E3 season. Um, like Ubisoft, I thought like some people were like, oh, U Ubisoft, Ubisoft, whatever. They they came out and like, oh, they, they had some cool stuff, but it was cool. Other people were like, Ubisoft was great. I thought it, theirs was great. Um, maybe the 
best one except for like what's that one the, the pirate one that's never coming out oh uh, df no i don't know no I'm, no the, you know what i'm talking about the pirate Whatever. game yeah. yeah everyone's forgot about it right yeah. uh and then nintendo comes out and they're like oh yeah uh pokemon scarlet and violet dlc and i was like oh, okay like cool and then it goes through farm sims right paleo and and uh and then they like show mario rpg right because and and i i made a big point about this in our nintendo direct coverage like mario rpg is one of my top three games right yep. um i would say breath of the wild just got knocked out by tears of the kingdom <laughs> uh as number one mario rpg is probably number two and then majora's mask is probably number three because i'm a weirdo uh but like i cannot believe that I saw it and, and I was like, oh my God, they're going to bring it to, to NSO, right? It's coming to NSO, the, the Super Nintendo emulator thing they have on NSO. And then the little star flew by and every, all the graphics changed and like, I just lost it. I mean, yep. you remember, like in, in our group chat, I just started Mario RPG, Mario RPG, Mario. Like I was so, so stoked. Um, that yeah, it's I mean, one of my it's, favorite it's, games It's of an all okay time. game, I guess. Ah, oh, guy, fuck off. Um, but <laughs> the... Uh, yeah, the, the whole thing with Mario RPG is that it's a great, like, beginner RPG, right? Yes. And I've said that forever. Like, like if you don't like turn-based RPGs, Mario RPG has turn-based stuff, but it's still got, like, enough platforming and action stuff that goes on that you can, like, gel with it, right? A lot of people I know who don't like turn-based RPGs go, yeah, Mario RPG's great. Like, I love that game, right? It's the same people who don't like turn-based RPGs but love Pokemon. Weird. <laughs> um <laughs> <laughs> so but yeah and then mario wonder looks incredible and ah, it's not one of the game, new dude, games and, and the, i've noticed the little things that they're doing with this game right like we've seen tons of two, 2d mario games especially in the last five to six years where they you know they got good graphics and everything got cool environments and all kinds of stuff but they've really focused on the animations with both enemies and mario himself right his expressions yeah. and everything zooming mm -hmm. in on things and everything like that the new power-ups the crazy effects in the world and everything where it's like zooming in and then it like sucks things things in like a black hole almost into a different dimension you have to collect stuff within that certain amount of time it looks really fun i mean it's a 2d mario game i'm gonna be playing it regardless the only downside to yep. it though is it comes out the same day as Spider-Man. So I'm sorry, I gotta go Spider-Man. I already took oh. that entire weekend off. I'm playing the crap out of that game. I'm gonna have no life. I'm gonna have like a crazy old man beard going and everything. Yeah. And then, <laughs> Me too. and then I'm gonna be playing Mario, but I'm definitely hyped for it. As much as I love, as much as I love Mario, right? Spider-Man, like that's up there in, in one of my, I'd say top 10 games, right? The spider, yeah. the original Spider-Man. Miles Morales is probably like number 12. Uh, you yep. know, if I have to put it down, like it's right under the top 10 because I thought it was great too. It just was a little short. Yeah. Um, But yeah, Spider-Man 2 is looking great. But this is what I'm talking about, Talon, because I know there's been so many times where you harp on Nintendo and go like, Nintendo, new hardware. Come on. Like, what yep. are you doing? And I still will. The, but... <laughs> and I know you still will, but my main thing about this has always been like, you know what? Like people dog on the switch all the time, but Nintendo doesn't need that power, right? Like Nintendo has, they have such visionary teams and visionary people that they pick to head these projects, right? We've seen Mario do all sorts of weird shit over the years. And now we're seeing like Mario wonder is basically Mario drops acid, right? He like, it's like <laughs> torso gets all long. He turns it to a fucking elephant at some point like it's just the weirdest thing you've ever seen and it's just this really cool like just really cool unique ideas that nintendo is so good at right it's just like tears of the kingdom everyone's like well it's 30 fps and it's 720p and i'm like i can glue together stuff and make like a b2 bomber <laughs> and fly it over hyrule and like destroy everything well, think, in my I path i think that also like, I don't shows care. The, the power that these teams making those games have and be able to tell Nintendo, you give us the time, you let us do what we want and we'll make you a banger essentially, right? Yes. Nintendo, and, and Nintendo doesn't is... come in and be like, oh, that's crap, uh, get that out of here, essentially, so. And yeah, and that's why like, and this is also why you see the Switch, you know, the Switch is catching up to the PS2 and with like these Mario games coming out, it might pass it. Probably. And er everyone you me even me right like i've always been a switch defender like i'm like it's a portable like what do you want it's a portable right yeah. realistically you boil it down to the end of the day it's a portable but they have made some of the best games i've ever played 
for that little portable, right? Like Mario Odyssey, Breath of the Wild, uh, Metroid Prime Remastered. Like, yeah, it's right. Metroid Dread, Prime, Tears of the Kingdom, Metroid all Dread, those Tears games, of the Kingdom. Right? Like, there's yeah. so many incredible games for the Switch over the past, what, seven years now or six years that it's been out. Yeah. And like, now they're like, yeah, we're going to go another year. Uh, and yeah. we're going to give you some of like the most banger stuff in the last year. Yeah. Uh, Nintendo just is is a cut above and their IP. I've said this forever. Their IP is the best in the business, like yeah. without question. And their takes, teams takes are the takes best. Takes out in the Sony, business. takes out Microsoft, yeah. takes them out both. Yep. Yeah. And Those. like, I love Sony IP and there's like Halo. I love Halo as an IP. Yeah. Right. But like, yeah, Microsoft's been messing that up. But like like Zelda and Mario and Metroid, yeah. right? And even like Animal Crossing is a really good IP, right? Like Yoshi's Island, that's great IP. I'm Luigi's just gonna Mansion's say, where IP. was my Metroid Prime 4 trailer or Metroid Prime 2 remake? Come on, uh, I wanted it. I, I wanted it. I said it in my video too. I was like, I know Talon's gonna be upset that that wasn't announced, but to me, like Mario RPG and like so much like and and Mario Wonder, like that goes like hands down best show of the entire season yeah. and i know and i know they mostly focus on mario stuff because again they're going off of the success that was the mario movie you cannot deny that i mean that movie has surpassed like frozen and made billions of dollars and it's just like yeah no they're, they're gonna capitalize on that crap so yeah it, it's it good for them yeah exactly so yeah anyway regardless nintendo won it, it, it's it's yep. a no-brainer nintendo just mic drop in front of both of the other competitions and was just like yeah hey guys see you next year or you know see you at tokyo game show which i'm hoping it's very rare that it happens but i'm hoping nintendo has some kind of small booth at tokyo game show and i can go try some of these games out i would love to do that so plus, if you want to play another fun game i know right and if you guys want to play another great game we'll quickly touch on this really really quick Final Fantasy 16 has been out this entire weekend and it has been doing bangers in terms of reviews. We're not looking at those review bombers or anything like that. And people online, for the most part, are praising it. You have a small minority, I think, that is unfortunately trying to focus on, is this a true Final Fantasy game? And I will admit there are a few things in the game that I wish were in there. But again, we cover that in a different video. Check it up in the top right corner um, or we'll pin it in the comments below. But regardless, Final Fantasy 16 is a fun time. If you, have in, if you want to, write the demo. It was a banger as well. So um but it is a good final fantasy game i personally think so but anyway we're gonna get to our final topic right now and that is unfortunately going back to the can i call it a shit show i'm just gonna call it a shit show um the microsoft activision going into court and everything and sony putting out their statements and just all the emails and just everything that has been dropped and shown to us and everything is just like what what is going on because now that these guys are under oath you're starting to see everything that they said like oh yeah no we're doing fine and everything and we're strong and we're confident about this and now all of a sudden they're just like on both sides by the way they're just like uh yes. yeah uh, about this so uh mm, yeah because you have to get you have to keep in mind guys what is the number one thing a company has to please in this day and age the shareholders so of course in emails or statements or videos or anything they're gonna be like oh, yeah no we're doing fine we're doing fine because they want that money from them so they can keep the business going and everything like that now, i'm not gonna say either of the business are gonna be bankrupt or anything there's billions and trillions of dollars in both of those companies but we're starting to see that uh yeah maybe they are actually really worried and things are going on because there's a ton of crazy stuff going on right now but the first big news to come out of this is the fact that Star there's a rumor that Starfield was going to be PlayStation 5 exclusive and that Sony had approached him and everything. However, though, and a lot of people, I'm not seeing a lot of people talk about this, is that the head of Bethesda, Pete Hines, was there at the testimony and was like, no, it was never going to be. Yeah, that was, that no was really weird. no one's talking about that. I'm just like... <laughs> Why is no one talking about yeah. the head of freaking Bethesda? Yeah, I think what it was is there was this because Sony had Ghostwire Tokyo, they had Deathloop, right? Right. As and time as time exclusive, if I remember correctly, right? Sony's yeah, that yeah, forever. but but yeah. like with those, right? Uh, Deathloop was made by Arcane, and I think uh, Ghostwire was made by Tango, right? Yes. So those are two of the like smaller studios, and yeah, like Bethesda might be like, yeah, we'll have those be exclusive. Why not? Those are smaller studios. We can like sacrifice that. Deathloop, in my opinion, was a banger. A lot of people didn't like it, but I loved it. That was my game of the year, twenty twenty one. Personally, Redfall, um, bet way better than Redfall. Uh, like Gollum is on the same tier as Redfall, in my opinion. But maybe not that bad. That's a little harsh. That's a little Redfall. harsh. That's a little harsh. 
because like I can move around in Redfall. Um, so yeah, like Pete Hines straight up said like, no, we never had any plans of making anything exclusive before we were purchased. And that's a weird thing that you see, you know, like, you know, me and Talon have talked about this multiple times on Twitter and we talk about it sometimes the stuff we see because it's so ridiculous. Like you get fanboys when you try and follow gaming news. They just crop up. On all sides. Get it all on all yeah, sides. Yes. I get I, like I, I have blocked so many Sony and Xbox fanboys because I'm just like, you guys are just stupid and ridiculous. Right. Yeah. Um, but like you, you get that and, and still I try and weed them out, but you still see something like, oh, look at Look at they said they they had to buy it because uh and it's being this narrative is being spun as oh they said they had to buy it because sony was going to make it exclusive and pete hines said no we had no like we had no intentions of making it exclusive and that makes sense because bethesda proper right big bethesda they want to sell as many copies as they can exactly right? they're not going to make starfield only on playstation why would they do that right like no because it's just like elden ring right Elden Ring from Soft was like, yeah, we know Xbox players will buy this. We know because it's so hyped, right? And it's just like Bethesda. Bethesda comes out and they go, yeah, you know, there's that Game Pass players don't buy games. And, and it's kind of proven in numbers that Xbox players, because they usually wait for things to come to Game Pass, they purchase less. And it, you're well within your right to do that, especially if you're on a budget. But uh, still starfield is big enough it's got big enough draw just like elden ring that they're gonna go no we're absolutely putting it on there what are you talking about like yep. you couldn't you couldn't give us enough money to make up for the revenue we'd lose from cutting that out lo that lost revenue you're gonna have so what do yeah. they do they buy the company apparently so yeah and so and it, but then uh, phil spencer goes oh like there was a twitter rumor that starfield's gonna be exclusive let's buy bethesda yeah, even All though right, the head Phil, is like, like, yeah, weird, no. <laughs> cool, weird, yeah. And then Pete Hines goes, no, we were not going to make it no. exclusive. And I already, and, and, and I can already see some comments about like, you know, well, Sony does these exclusives and everything. So why is it bad that Microsoft is doing? Okay, first off, buying exclusivity or part-time exclusivity and buying an entire company is very different. And here's the kicker as well. And, this, and I guess this shows how strong Sony is in terms of their platform and everything, right? These companies could say no. Looking at people like Square Enix and all these other guys, you want to know why Final Fantasy is barely on Xbox? And even, you, people are going to say it's because Sony buys it. It's like, yes. But why does Square say yes to it every single time? Well, first off, they're both a Japanese company and they prefer to work together. So that's one thing. We have an entire video on it. Check it out. But because Square knows their thing is going to sell better on that particular system and losing out on an entire other platform especially now with Game Pass, because I'm sure when Xbox goes to the table to try and negotiate, they're going to be like, you put it on Game Pass? They're going to be like, no, that's lost revenue for us. Yeah. Right? And especially with how popular Final Fantasy 16 is doing, we don't have sales numbers for it just yet. But I would not be surprised if it has easily made back its money already. Or maybe not exactly yet, but it's easily yeah, I... made them a bunch of money. I mean, this is easily going to be the best selling Final Fantasy game. Maybe Remake beats it. I'm not sure. But regardless. every single every single person i know who has a playstation 5 right now is playing final fantasy 16, i don't know anyone crazy. who's not playing it even even friends yeah. who have not enjoyed past final fantasy games or you know maybe the only one they've played is seven remake because it was kind of a mix between the two and everything like that everyone i know is playing final fantasy 16 right oh, now i do have one friend who he, he was like oh i meant to ask you uh, are you playing final fantasy 16 i was like yes it's very good and he's like okay i was on the fence but i trust you i'm gonna buy it yeah. right so he already saw it and was like, and he's not a huge JRPG guy. He likes Western RPGs, Bethesda, that kind of, you know, that kind of right. stuff, right? Uh, but he was like, yes, yeah, it looked really cool, really interesting. And he loved Game of Thrones. So he was like all about it. And I think they made it more accessible that way for a lot of people who might not have been into it. So yeah, why would you put that on Game Pass? No, that's lost, you know that's lost revenue and everything. And again, and even continuing on with exclusives and everything, um, there's, even a, there's even some stuff that was brought up in this Activision deal about how Indiana Jones, which is owned by Disney, is now exclusive to Xbox. And then Phil Spencer was like, I guess the FCC asked him about it and everything. He's like, I was whatever. But then Phil Spencer was like, well, Sony has Spider-Man. It's just like, uh, you guys do know that Marvel came to you first for that and you turned them down. So when they brought it to Sony, Sony's like, well, we already have the rights to Spider-Man, Sony the company. So let's make this exclusive. And we can also maybe tie this into a movie, some comics and everything like that. And Marvel's like, Let's do it. 
And they did that in in Across the Spider Verse, right? There's yeah. a scene in that movie. There's a scene where literally with Gen- Spider Man PS4 playing Spider Man Two. Yeah. No, Spider Man Two, right? Like, yeah. Yeah. So they're advertised like like so it's already a match made with Sony to to, to exactly. Spider-Man, but they like, went to Xbox first, and Xbox turned them down. So and again, yeah. fine. You know, Indiana Jones wants to be exclusive. That's fine. I just find it extremely funny that he brings up Spider-Man when he turned him down in the first place. So just saying. But the last thing to kind of really go over, because again, we could talk for hours about this thing and everything like that, um, is the, going back to how we said that we're starting to see that no, both sides are feeling it and they're not all, you know, smiley faces and everything, is that we're starting to see things like we saw the emails when it came to so- or Sony saying that they'll be fine without Activision slash Call of Duty, right? And by yep. the way, I don't give two shits about Call of Duty. But I don't give a shit about Call of Duty I, either. I know, honestly. Right? I mean, there's a fight, they're, sh- they're shutting down uh, Warzone 1, which people are up and not busy about that. But regardless, yep. there's so there's been emails now where they're saying, you know, Phil's like, oh yeah, no, we're we're not worried or anything like that. Again, that's all towards shareholders and competition and people are talking with and everything like that. And now that they're under oath and they have to tell the truth, guys, CEOs, these people, they lie all the time. You don't know that by now. It's just a yeah. matter of the fact. Yeah. So like, yeah, don't like a lot of people. And this is the narrative that I've seen right now. Jim Ryan is a liar. Phil Spencer is just a nice, normal guy. Like Phil Spencer is the CEO of a multinational conglomerate. Yep. Like you do not get to be a CEO being a good, honest person. No CEO in the history of time. It's just like, I, you know what I really want? I want everybody to have everything. Like if they were that type of person, they wouldn't be a CEO. They are they are people who are out there to get your money and they are out there to cut their competitors' throats. Don't forget that. It could be Jim Ryan, it could be Phil Spencer, it could be Sean Layden. Like Sean Layden, he's a CEO. That's just he was a CEO for a while. That's just how it worked. I, the only one I'll say, maybe Reggie. I respect <laughs> Reggie. Reggie. But that's that's it. Reggie, like Reggie's my man. But that's only CEO I've ever seen that I go, you know what? I would sit down with Reggie and like, yeah. Like and we, we and, could have and we're starting to okay. see, and we're starting to see away from those emails now that, you know, again, people like over at PlayStation are worried that they're going to get a worse version of the game because now they have to give their dev kit to Activision, which is owned by their competition. You cannot tell me, let's, let's just put a hypothetical out there. Let's say this person here is making the brand new iPhone. I know iPhone is owned by Apple, but regardless, just say, for example, iPhone was owned by this individual here. And their competition bought up another like app store or something like that or an app programmer team that they usually work with right now that you in your iphone is heavily guarded you're able to keep it to yourself and everything like that right and your competition doesn't know crap about it until after it releases now all of a sudden you have to give your new prototype to them which in turn gives it to the competition that is terrible for your business it doesn't matter if it's in gaming it doesn't matter if it's tech- technology does not matter what it's in so i can see why sony's freaking out about this i really can't yeah, and they've it, even stated it, already now that they are not going to give their dev kit aka the playstation 6 to activision if they're bought up for call of duty they're just not going to do it they're not going to yeah it, it basically equates to like legal corporate espionage right exactly so it is. Yeah, so. I, with that, I agree with Sony. Everyone's like, "Oh, Sony's being babies." I'm like, "You're you can't ask them to give their yeah. their prototype." If you were in the exact same position, you'd be doing the exact same thing. It's all about competition and everything. Yeah. It's all about trying to make sure that your competition does not get your product early ahead of time. Look at what it can do, and then try to one up it. That, that's yep. stupid. That, that'd be like Intel giving their CPU layout to AMD. Why would they do that? Yep, they, they wouldn't. No one would. So. Again, we can go into hours and hours and hours talking about this stuff and everything, but regardless, I'm just honestly sick and tired of it. It gives me a headache every single time I think about it. In my personal opinion, the best thing to happen would for this not to go through and for Activision to grow a pair and get rid of Bobby and get rid of their toxic CEOs and everyone else in there yep. and bring new people in. I know that's a yeah, get false like dream, the, but that would be the best. Get, it would keep competition. It would keep things going to both consoles and we wouldn't have to deal with any of this stuff because I guarantee yeah, yeah. you, Microsoft is going to look at this and be like, you know what? Yeah, we're going to play nice. We're going to keep it uh, everywhere. And then they're going to look at, all right, how much do we have to pay in legal fees if we break this? Their business, they're going to do it. They've done it in the past. It's, yeah. it's going to happen. Yeah, so. best thing that could happen is like you said, that gets blocked, bored at Activision goes, okay, 
C-suite, you're gone. Like the entire C-suite, a lot of the management that's been there forever, the devs, like the gone. older senior Bye. devs, Adios. get them out of there. Give new people the reins. Get get like you know, like I said, CEOs are not good people. They're out there to cut throats, but we don't need someone who's like literally threatening to cut someone's throat because that's what Bobby Kotick did, right? And Microsoft uh, already said they're need... gonna let them stay in if this goes yeah, through. They they're not gonna change said, oh, anything. Gonna so it, that whole that whole exactly argument of making this better for Activision, he's still gonna be there. Nothing's gonna change. Yeah. Anyway, regardless, like I said before, we could talk about this forever. But anyway, guys, we want to know your thoughts down below in the comments. Make sure you check out all our videos, though, because again, like we said, one of our highest videos is literally us shitting on Sony. And we also shit on Xbox. And we also shit on Nintendo yeah. when we can. Although I feel like I probably do it more than Bobby does. But regardless, let us yeah. know your thoughts down below in the comments. As always, leave a like if you liked the video and subscribe if you happen to be new. If you want to see more news, guides and all that fun stuff, we got a ton of Final Fantasy 16 stuff coming up. Make sure you check it all out. So anyway, I've been Town with 5 Direct, joined by the awesome little Bobby here. Until next time, everyone. We'll see you all in the next one. Johnny.